So say you're practicing and you realize that the action seems a little bit too low. You're not really getting quite enough play out of the strings, especially down here, down near the nut. Well, thankfully, Emmett's made a very easy truss adjustment for the stick. And it's all based on this very simple truss system, which is anchored up here behind the headstock and is adjusted very easily by virtue of this hex nut down near the belt hook. So let's say I wake up in the morning and I go to practice and uh, I start to play. And I notice that down at the lowest notes on the strings, down by the nut, I don't have very much play, uh, not much clearance between the frets, but like I do higher up on the instrument. And I notice on the melody strings, yeah, there's some buzzing going on down there. Uh, what that means is that my instrument has developed an arch. And uh, fortunately, Emmett uh, has designed a truss system that's really easy to adjust, much easier than on any other kind of instrument out there. So in order to correct this arch, all I have to do is um, loosen up the truss rod. Because right now the truss rod is pulling too hard on the back side of the instrument. And so if I loosen up on it, then it's going to uh, let the strings pull the other way and it's going to be in balance. I can straighten out the board very easily. Uh, so I take my truss wrench and I put it in my left hand and then I put it in the back of the instrument where the truss nut is. And I'm going to show you with this overhead camera. I put the truss wrench in on the nut and then I kind of wedge my thumb in right behind it uh, on the other side so that I have some leverage. And without pushing down on the strings, it's very important not to use this, grab the strings to get leverage because that can dent the strings. I'm going to push on the wrench so that I can loosen up the truss a little bit. And usually it's about, you know, if, if I have been keeping it adjusted well, it'll be only about uh, 20 or 30 degrees that I need to turn the nut in order to be able to get a little more play out of it. try to go for just a little bit more. So again, I'll put the wrench in and loosen it up just a bit. Uh, I can remember very easily which direction to push the truss by uh, pushing the wrench away from me, pushes the strings away from the board. So uh, if I push too much, then I'll have too much clearance uh, in the middle of the board and I'll end up with a bow. But right now, that feels pretty good. So I'll check it out. feels really good and I can play every note from the X fret way down here which would normally be the nut on a 34 inch scale instrument all the way up to the 24th fret and I can get good response on my low bass string, my high bass string, high melody string, uh, the whole board feels good. Now what about the other extreme? I'm going to go ahead and put a bow in the instrument so that I can show you what that looks like. Uh, when the instrument is bowed, you'll have more clearance at the center of the board, around the 12th fret, than you will uh, down near the nut. So I can see that I have a lot of clearance at these strings. I can even see from the, the shadow off the string that I have a lot of clearance there. So I'm going to put the wrench in on the left-hand side, and I want to make sure that the nut is spun up against the thread. Uh, as I loosened it up a whole lot and as I'm tightening again I'm wedging my thumb up against the wrench here and I don't want to push down on the strings because that could damage the strings so I get a little extra leverage here by grabbing the pickup and then I pull the truss back and I can see that the action is going down quite a bit I know I've gone too far if I start to get buzzing on these strings like I had before. It feels pretty good. Action feels nice and uniform. Now you'll notice at the 
instrument is out of tune. Well, uh, anytime you adjust the truss, you're going to have to retune the instrument. Emmett's patented truss design can pull against the tension of the strings. It can also push in the direction of the strings if your instrument develops an arch that can't be corrected just by loosening the truss. If that happens, all you have to do is wind the truss all the way down to the end of the threads and then continue turning the nut in the direction that you would normally turn it to compensate for an arch. So you're basically pushing the strings away from the frets. Remember, Pulling the wrench towards you pulls the strings towards the frets. Pushing the wrench away from you pushes the strings away from the frets. You can use this convenient truss adjustment routine uh, whenever you feel like the instrument isn't quite straight. Uh, but there will be times when you'll want to make a more precise adjustment. And in those situations, you'll really need to be able to be sure that the profile is flat. Uh, say, for example, you want to change your tuning or your string gauges. Uh, you're going to need to be making adjustments at the nut and at the bridge in order to compensate for those changes. Or let's say you bought a used stick from someone and you want to make sure that the bridge and the nut are adjusted properly. Well, first thing you have to do is make sure that the profile of the instrument is truly flat. So uh, the way to do that is to hold the instrument up to a light source and look down the instrument uh, from the, the bridge end. And if you look at the edges of the frets, you'll actually see the light shining off the frets. And it makes it very easy to see what the line is, whether it's curving back in an arch, whether it's flat, or whether it's bowed. So what I'm going to do is set the instrument up in front of a camera pointing at the light source and show you what that looks like for an arch, a bow, and a straight profile so that you can see that for yourself. And that should make it much easier for you to make sure that your instrument has a truly straight profile. So the camera is now on my perspective as I look down the instrument. And you can see that's an arch. See that top line on the edge of the frets there? So you can see how it's curving back away from the strings. And this I'm looking at the bass strings. Now if I uh, show you on the melody strings, this is what it looks like. You can see how, it, you can see how it's curving back there. See that's not a straight line, curving back toward the headstock. All right, now I'm going to um, put a bow in the instrument, and you can see what that looks like. So there's a bow on the bass strings. You can see how the curve is it's dipping in the middle of the board. And I'll show you the same thing on the melody side. This is what I'm seeing when I hold the instrument up to the light. The camera's perspective is where my eye would be. And that's the bow on the melody side. And then I'm going to uh, straighten out the board and show you what a straight profile looks like. And this is what a straight line profile looks like. Let's sit on the bass side and on the melody side. And, you know, you have to come to it by degrees. You tweak a little bit, take a look, tweak a little bit more, take a look. And then when you're done, put your instrument on and try it out. Don't forget, before you do any adjustments to the bridge or the nut, make sure that you've got a flat profile. Often people will think that uh, the action is low and needs to be corrected. They'll do what they would have done with their guitar, which is to raise the action at the bridge. Uh, but that's a mistake. Uh, if the fretboard isn't perfectly flat, then all you'll be doing is uh, making the action higher and you still have an arch in your neck. Happy tapping. Thank you.